Time to start cleaning up this top cover. As you can probably see, the meter window there is quite dusty. There's a fair bit of dust and dirt on this. All over really, but no serious problems that I can see. Now taking this apart is quite a lot like taking apart the viewfinder of a Retina Retinet 1A. Uh, a couple of differences, but very similar process. So first I'm going to remove the shoe. Now if this was a retinet, when you remove that shoe and its screws, you'd also be unscrewing the plate that this was fixed to. But on the retina they actually riveted it, that plate in place. So now taking this apart, what am I going to do here? Well, I'll remove the front lens components here. I'll be lucky we got here and we did because that screw was loose and it's just boinged off into the distance. That screw was loose too so they were not going to stay there very long. Took those off and I will have to find that missing screw. Okay so to continue on We've got this little retainer, it's um, vaguely cup shaped, it holds the front viewfinder lens in place. Now on a Retinet 1A this would be plastic and it would be behind a glass window. Here it's glass so no need for the glass window. On this side we've got the piece that gives us our bright lines in the finder. And uh, that'll be held down with a touch of lacquer there, which we probably won't be able to get to, and I don't want to anyway, because it almost certainly if I start splashing acetone around in there, it would end up running onto something I didn't want it to run onto. So we'll take this out. Now this piece, when it comes out nicely, has this little piece of film in here, with our, these form the bright lines, the parallax correction lines for the finder. And there is a little diffuser here. And it goes sort of diffused side out. The inside surface is not so exciting looking, it's just clear plastic. To pop those to one side. Here we have a little divider or spacer. And then we have a piece of glass forming the front glass for the uh, finder at that point. Okay. Now our rear lens element here is held in with a little slide-in clip. Very much like it was on a retinet. There is our lens. That's the eyepiece lens itself. Now this is um, pretty much flat on one side and certainly convex on the other side. Now the convex side goes towards the front of the camera, flat side goes to the back. Now there is a little plastic or metal holder in here, I'll see if I can get it loose, that that rear lens sits into. Yeah I've got it out. It's just like a little sleeve that fits around that rear lens, that eyepiece lens, and that serves the same purpose as the black paper washer does on the retinets. It just adds a bit of space in there between the two. Okay, what else have we got to come out of here? Well, there's a spring on the frame counter. I'm going to unhook that from the frame counter tab. Not, not going to try and wriggle it off the viewfinder part yet. And then there's two screws. Hold the viewfinder body into the cat, the top here. So I'll loosen those screws up. That screw's loose. A lot of loose screws in here. I uh, wasn't really expecting that. That wasn't really a problem with the rest of the camera from memory. And this should just lift out. And it does. Now this piece uh, is virtually the same as it would be on a Retinet 1A. Uh, 
I'm just looking at the front surface mirror here and the semi-silvered mirror here and they're both sort of a bit uh, hazy looking it's they've got a bit of a bit of deposit on there which I would rather they hadn't got I'm going to unhook the spring from the bracket that's the return spring for the frame counter and this I'm going to clean in the ultrasonic cleaner and how I do that is I take a small drinking glass fill it full of uh, hot water and one one or two drops of ordinary dish soap and then that glass I sit inside my ultrasonic cleaner and just fill up the ultrasonic cleaner with water around it and the ultrasonic waves will pass through the glass into the uh, nice soapy solution and I give this three minutes in my ultrasonic cleaner pull it out run it under a hot tap and then I use a rocket blower like that to blow away all the water any moisture or droplets while I'm tr also drying it with a hair dryer at the same time so you only need about three hands it's easy and um, keep using that blower because if there's any droplets s sit on those glass surfaces and dry there they'll leave coffee rings on the glass you'll be able to see those marks you got to keep blowing away any droplets that you see and then you'll end up with nice clean sparkly surfaces a bit better than they currently are I'm not going to bother showing you the process because I'm pretty sure I've done that before with the Retinet 1A servicing only recently well this has cleaned up quite well not as well as I'd hoped but um, that's pretty good that'll do for me next job clean up this well, this top cover needs to be cleaned I'm just using naphtha here and be careful not to get it on the window there this is a fair bit of dirt coming off there but it's looking in pretty good condition this top cover The frame counter numbers are often grimy. There's no return spring on here at the moment, so I'm going to have to just work that lever by hand. Sometimes you'll find that the frame counters on these cameras are very, very stiff in their operation. There are two probable causes for that sort of behaviour. One is if the camera's had a bash on the top, so that the top's distorted and so that the, the, the disc doesn't move freely. And the other is if there's a lot of dust or grit has entered and is that, that's jamming it up. This one's not in the bad shape at all. It's not uncommon to find traces of corrosion, or a little pitting along the, those edges where the chrome top tucks down into the chrome trim on the camera body. This one's in good order. And it's always worth wiping this out well around here. The, uh, around the windows you get grime in there and that will if you don't clean it at this stage when you put the clean glass back in there you can be fairly sure that the dirt will ooze back out onto your glass well that's looking pretty good so I want to clean the glass here and the rear glass here now that's a piece of plain glass that rear eyepiece 
but I need to clean that with some normal domestic glass cleaner. And the outside is usually going to be the grimiest. Yeah, that's coming off pretty dirty. You may have to have one or two goes at this because um, there'll be dirt and grease and all sorts of rubbish around the edges which will make its way out as soon as you've cleaned the rest of it. Um, or your cotton bud will pick it up and smear the remainder about. And to access the inside, just come straight in from the front. I don't recommend disassembling that rear eyepiece. It's only going to give you grief. This piece, this black piece here, is staked into the body and you could peel those edges back to pull it apart but it won't be fun getting it back in if you do. Just checking to make sure that that's nice and sparkly. It looks pretty good to me. That leaves this one here, this meter needle window. That's usually fairly grimy. Be fairly gentle with this, you don't want to damage it. But there is a fair bit of muck coming off there. You can go through a fair few cotton buds doing this as you, uh, you don't want to be wiping any grit onto the glass. Now I'm going to do the inside surface. Yeah, there's a few marks on there, I'm not sure whether they're scratches, they could easily be scratches. As you get the glass cleaner, you're able to see minor defects much clearer. When it's got its usual layer of haze and crud on there, you just hope that underneath all that crud, everything is sparkly. That's as clean as I'm going to get that. So there's the top cover. That's all clean. That's ready to be reassembled. I've already got the uh, big internals ready to go back in there. So I can just put that back in place and start cleaning the other stuff up. I'll start by putting the shoe back on here. I've given that a uh, quick clean. It was in very tidy condition. Flip it over. Here I have the viewfinder assembly and I'll need to put its return spring back in place. Which connects up to this piece here. I think I'll need at least a screwdriver as well there to poke at that. I 
That's that. And pop that into the body. Making sure that spring's not tucked underneath or anything silly. And there are two screw holes visible there. Two black screws. And that one's easy to place because I can come in from the front. Mate, down here beside that little condenser lens there. They seem to be in well. I'll just make sure this thing's square with the body. Run those two screws up tight. And then hook my spring to this post on the frame counter, which may be easier said than done. Mm, yes, that's fun. Yep. That's it. So the frame counter is now sprung loaded. Okay, so starting here, we have this little collar. That drops in there. Yeah, rear eyepiece glass drops into that collar. So I've got to clean that next. Here are the three pieces of glass we need to clean. So, since these are all just plain glass, they're quite durable. And I'm just using glass cleaner on a cotton bud here to clean that. The equivalent piece on a retinette would be plastic and you would need to be somewhat circumspect about how enthusiastic you cleaned it because it scratches very easy but this doesn't that's pretty grimy front surface of course is exposed to fingers and it gets pretty grimy. Now I hold that up to the light and see if I've got it all clean. I can see there's still some grime on the front, particularly in the corners. That's where it was up against the camera top. And it may well be that those marks won't come off because they may effectively be scuff marks in the glass. The centre of the glass is very clean. Check again. Just one patch in this corner. And 
that is as clean as it's going to come that looks okay so the rear eyepiece lens this is quite definitely convex on one surface and it's either flat or close enough to it on the other surface it might be slightly convex concave rather the convex side faces inwards towards the front of the camera again I'll hold that up to the light check that it's clean It appears good. It only leaves the front glass here, which is very, very grimy. That's for the frame lines illumination. Usually it's around the, the edges where it contacts the body or contacts the inside of the camera top. That's going to be the grimiest. And uh, because that's often oils and similar, it often sets like a lacquer and doesn't want to come off. So by Checking it with transmitted and reflected light, you can get a good idea of how clean that glass is. Of course, it's especially important that the inside surface is absolutely clean, because the outside surface you can get at and clean later. All right. Those pieces look okay. I'll start putting them back together. I'll start with the, the eyepiece lens. Now the convex surface faces to the front. I'm just making sure I've got no dust on there. And that should slide into that little sleeve that we put in there previously. And here is the retainer. That fits much more securely than the similar one on the Retnet 1As. Why they made them a different shape, I don't know. Alright, so that's in place. And I'll have another look before I go any further to make sure there's no dust inclusions. That all looks good. front glass for the finder drops in there and we have this mask push that in now I can see through the finder and see what the view looks like it looks looks pretty good Okay, so the remaining pieces here. We have a piece of glass. That goes to the front, obviously.
we have this spacer that drops in there It'll keep that glass firmly up against the camera top. Then we have this, the pellicle if you like, and uh, that goes up a certain way. It's got a little tiny arrowhead in the middle of that, which you won't see there. That points to the top. And that sits in this cradle. And the L shape at the bracket at the bottom is at the bottom. You slide that on there. Now this has got some big smudge on it, right at this corner. It looks like something's etched into it. I'm not going to poke at that because it might just end up making it worse. Busy putting this in back to front. Here's the diffuser window. The diffuser should face to the front, the diffuse surface should face to the front. And taking the three pieces together as a unit, slide that into place behind that spacer we put in there. I'm holding that with my thumb so it doesn't fall out. I can look out the window and see if my parallax correction lines look right and they do. I'm seeing a tiny bright spot in the middle of the screen or just off to the middle of the screen. That tells me something interesting. It means that that mask, that celluloid mask has got a hole in it that light is diffusing through if you want to pull a bit of white paper up there you may see that there's a tiny mark just here where light's diffusing through it it means that that surface here has lost something it's light it's not blacked out so see if we can fix that. We don't need anything in the middle of that screen of course. The arrowhead is uh, normally hidden. But using a black marker pen there I'm blocking that out. Black paint would probably be more efficient. That looks good, back where we were. That'll just stop that from being a distracting nuisance. Okay, so we'll slide this into place. And check again. That's 
better, no distractions. And this strap goes on here. And one of those screws hit the floor. It hasn't been found yet. So I'd better look for it. Okay, you can all stop looking. That's the top cover, the viewfinder all back together, and that can go on the camera body. Well here's our meter, and our meter here of course has been, is dead. So I'm going to take the top off the meter and have a look inside, see if the movement is electrically alive or whether that's completely dead. Just remove these two tiny screws or back them out. Probably only in the casing. You yeah, haven't lift that off. Those screws are easily lost, so put that somewhere safe so the screws don't fall onto the floor and disappear forever. And here's our meter. Now it does look a little bit grimy in here, which might indicate someone's greasy fingerprint. It's hard to say. There's nothing to see, everything, you know, there's no obvious broken connection. I'm going to get a, uh, my multimeter and just check this and see what's happening. Right, let's see if this has any life in it at all. It doesn't look like it. Now that movement is entirely dead. Now many years ago, the uh, movement there, the coil, that was re you could get them as a part and you could replace them. Um, it was always awkward, very difficult to do and uh, from memory, you're very lucky if you could replace two out of three without ruining the replacement part. However, of course, there's no replacement parts anymore, so the meter is effectively useless. What are we going to do? Well, here is the meter taken from a Reflex S. And this will make a good substitute. Of course, with a different arrangement at the top here, the easiest way is to swap the whole top. Screws don't want to back out far enough. That's better. That's the top off that meter. Let's take the top we've got here. The window's clean on the inside, so I'm not going to muck with that at all. I'm just going to put this straight in place and clean the outside surface once it's together. Okay, so there's a working meter.
Just checking that the follower dial is moving smoothly. It appears to be. I'll clean the meter window. This is plastic and it is easily scratched. Alright, so there we have a working meter. How accurate it is is yet to be determined. And put that on the camera body. I'll start here by putting the film release lever back in place. I'll just wipe a bit of molybdenum paste through the centre of that. Let's remove our elastic band. Put that in place. I think a touch of lacquer to lock that screw on the top there would be a useful thing to do. So, taking some nail varnish here. Put a tiny drop in on both sides of that pinhead screw. That'll lock that. Now the cocking rack and everything has already been lubricated. It's looking pretty clean there. I'll just put a little touch of synthetic grease there on that outside surface and that'll find its way around. Here meter, this little tab on the back of the meter hooks under the arm here at the end and sometimes it's awkward getting your shutter release and your film release tucked under the end of the meter easily. That's looking okay. Last look under the top cover, put the shutter release button in place, slide this down over the meter, hoping that the buttons stay in place, and they do. Now I'm going to check the frame counter, make sure that it moves one frame and only one frame. The film advance isn't, isn't freeing up there, it's like the uh, release lever's not operating. Let's try that again. This is not hard. Oh, I can see what's happening. Okay. Let's just do our frame counter first and worry about this other problem later. Yeah, that number's centered up with the notch. Now what had happened? This little rubber pad which is glued in at the end of the body here, it come adrift. I'll have to glue it back in place. Get a bit of adhesive. Take that little pad, I'm just going to wipe that through there. That goes into the end of the body right there. And that pad's not uncommonly missing. Uh, it really does need to be there. It locates the meter and keeps it fixed in place. 
now another go at putting this top cover on. That time looks more successful. Frame count is moving nicely. Buttons move smoothly. That's looking good. Get two screws in on the top cover at this end. If you've done everything right. These are the two chrome plated screws. If you've done something wrong, one or both of them will be nickel plated because you've used the chrome screws up somewhere else. One at the end here. Right, the rewind knob next. Here are the rewind knob components. I'll fit the screw to my screwdriver. The wavy washer light white with some synthetic grease, drop that into place there, that piece over the top, run the screw in, and do that up tight. The wavy washer gives us our friction which allows us to set this little marker next to our film type reminder dial. Let's get this in place. Let's check the centre of the rewinders up. They should just spin in. That's moving nicely. I'll put something through the fork. And this should be a two-stage process, you should see. Close that front of the camera. You should see a two-stage action. You lift the knob. This is to allow you to rewind the film. And as you lift it further, it pulls this out completely to allow you to take the cassette out of the camera. The meter dial up here. Well, since it's a completely different meter than the one that was in the camera, we've got no idea where the setting will be. We'll put that knob on there. Now note that there are two little holes in here which must line up with these two points here and here on that dial. If you get the wrong one in the wrong place, things won't be going well. So taking the large wavy washer, I'll put a little wipe of synthetic grease on that, drop that in there. I've got my dial all the way fully clockwise and I'll start this with my 3200 mark right here up by the 18 number. Put that piece on. There's another tiny wavy washer. It stabbed myself to death with the tweezers. And there's the screw that holds it all in place. That screw head's a little bit scratched. That can't be helped. I'll tighten that up. At the moment my alignment mark here is right up 
by the 18. Now it's unlikely that's correct, it's probably going to be somewhere closer to 17. Half a stop either side of that. Now I'm going to check this against a uh, calibrated light source and come back once I've got that in place. Well as luck would have it, that was exactly right. Didn't have to do anything. So, here's our camera body. All serviced and ready to go back together. Which means that the only thing left to be done is to service the shutter.